Okay, we got the K10 back here in the shop, back on the hoist, ready to do some stuff. I had a wheel bearing failure last year when I was driving this thing. It piled up pretty bad and I was having problems. Well, I'd say that's what the noise was. I was having problems with the locking hub and the front U joints were finito. So I did the whole other passenger side this spring and this side was semi good, nothing was loose. So I'm going to tackle that today and show you how to do hubs, wheel bearings and a U joint on a front dip on an eight and a half Chevy half gun. So I went ahead and took off the tire. We're going to remove that brake caliper first. And then on these front hubs, you just undo all these and that will pull off and there's more stuff in there. I'll bring you back and show you, but this is what's going on. So my hub is locked. I had a lot of problems with these hubs always since I bought the truck three years ago. And this should all turn, which it's not. So this side I have all fixed up already. I stole a set of good hubs from another truck I owned. And this one all grabs and it's good to go. So we're gonna make that side functional again. Bolts, not that hard. Use the big pliers, wiggle the hub free. Then you're left with this inside. It's not too bad in there. So this little snap ring, you pop it out and there's a clip back in there. You pop that out, that hub all apart. I sometimes screw the bolts into the hub piece and pull it out of the front rotor. It helps with that. And this is the inside. So there is a big nut in there holding all that on. So I'm gonna undo that and take the rotor off. And this is the socket I use to do that. There's two nuts in there I pull off. This is the back one. It has this little locating pin. There's a washer in between that one and here's the outside one. They're not on there super tight. A smaller half inch bar will get them off. So to get the U-joint out now, these bolts all have to come out and we have to remove all that to get the U-joint out. So I'm gonna do that. All off, you take off those bolts, then you can just hit the shield off. That part's easy. This hub that is on here, spindle, this sucker is where it gets tough. So the best way I found to get these bad boys off, I used to have to do lots of U-joints and front end pieces when I was mud bogging, mud racing. So with these, I just use, usually they're seized on there. You can use lots of anti-seize afterwards, but just an air hammer is your best bet with a dollar end. And then you just work it around, be gentle, and then it will all pop off. I have the rotor off, it's on the bench, so I'm gonna take everything apart and start doing bearings. I got everything on the bench here, the rotor, the axle, and then this spindle. So in here, there is a little bearing too. It's kind of tough, so I'm gonna replace that. This is the part number here. You can get them from Napa. And just, I use SKF wheel bearings. I'm gonna put new wheel bearings, seal, races. I'm gonna clean this all up, put it all in there. They're not great. I don't know how old they are, so I'm just gonna start fresh. Also, U-joint, it's not seized right now, but I do have one here, and I got it all apart, so I'm just gonna do it, because sure as hell, it's probably gonna seize sometime, so better start fresh. So I'm gonna clean all this up, and assemble my bearings, and bring you back after that. Got the U-joint all installed there. I just got the U-joint from my local Napa. This is an SKF, non-greasable one, so, I've ran them before, they seem to work fine. So I got this all installed and I just used vise and hammer to put the U-joint in. It all works very easy. Now I'm gonna start cleaning up my bearings, putting new bearings in and putting it all inside the rotors. New bearing all installed in there. It wasn't hard to install it. I just have a snap-on driver, I pound it in. To get it out is another story. They're kind of a little bit of a pain in the butt. So I kind of break the cage get all the needles out and then I can get a punch in there, hook it in and then push it out from the other way. I got the spindle all put on there. I do put a like a fair bit of copper anti-seize behind this around as best I can. It really helped out when I used to race the truck, the other one, it just helped it from being stuck in there all the time. So the plate will go back onto here and you'll thread the nuts on. And according to the old service manual, the spindle installation. You're looking at about 65 foot pounds for those nuts. So I'm gonna go ahead and do all that. New bearings all in there, 
packed with grease, new races in there too. I just drove them all in, very easy to do. And a new seal back there to finish it all off. I use a bearing packer to help me pack those bearings. So I'm gonna throw this up there and then I'll bring you back how I torque them up. I got the hub all sitting on there, bearings in there, push back. You gotta make sure, cause they like to fall off when you put the hub on. So that's all pushed on, ready to go. So there's an inner nut, an outer nut and this uh, washer that goes in between. The inner nut has the little nipple on it. That's the first one you wanna put in. So according to the Holy Bible here, uh, it says install the inner adjusting up foot 50 foot pounds and you're supposed to turn the rotor while doing it to seat it and then you back it off and then you do it again another 35 while being rotated and then it says a back adjuster nut off inner adjusting 3 8 maximum and then you put the sleeve back in so i'm going to do all that right now Okay, so that inner nut here with that locating pin, that's gonna go in first into that bad boy there. So I'm gonna start assembling it all. I usually just start it all by hand here. It's all tightened up in there. I just snugged it up with a regular ratchet, half inch, and that locating tab's facing out. So then we use a torque wrench, 50 foot pounds was what we'll do first. It's not very hard. Then you just go to the ratchet. Beat, so you might want to spin it. Make sure everything's seated, just double check. And then we back it off from 50 and go to 35. So just with another half inch ratchet, a little bit bigger one. I just spin it freely. And now we're going to 35 foot pounds. And we'll torque it up. And that was 35. Now we just have to back it off three eighths of a turn. Maximum three eighths of a turn. So the instructions say to back off that nut three eighths of a turn. I mark my socket. So we'll roughly give it just a hair more than a quarter turn. And that's usually where I leave them. I don't get too picky. I've never had them fly off, so it's worked well for me doing that way. So just so you kind of know where you're at and then give it roughly a quarter turn. It can be a slight bit more, as long as you don't go a half a turn. You want some play there, obviously. So that's gonna be close for me. Then you're gonna put this washer in there and you're gonna line up that square tab. And you gotta make sure that locating pin there lines up. You might have to adjust your back nut to make it go. That one worked perfectly. So the outer ring, it says 160 foot pounds and then you just leave it there. It's just to hold all that in place. So I'm going to just snug it up and then I'm going to torque it with the wrench to 160 foot pounds. Okay, the wrench is set up and now we're just going to... And that's how you do that. All good to go. We're going to put the locking hub in now. I just take a needle and I fill it full of grease. You know, this is what I used to do when I used to mud race. So this is how I'm doing it now still. These are used tubs. I had another truck and I salvaged them out of that because they were in decent shape. They just need some cleaning and some grease. So I'm going to use it. So you just pretty straightforward. You just get it in there, line it up, push it in. There's a big snap ring that goes in there that we got to get in there now. in there the next part is this c-clip it goes on the end of the axle so right here it kind of looks like it's you can't get it but basically the axle is slid back in so if you can just reach back in here even with a pry bar and you just pull that axle slightly ahead you should be able to get your 
C-clip on there. Or snap ring, I should say, not C-clip. And there, it's all seated in. So the next part is the locking hub itself. I do put a bit of anaerobic sealer on them. Again, from when I used to mud race, it really helped seal them up and keep moisture out of there long term kind of thing. These are another one I like to use a lot of copper anti-seize on, these little bolts because they tend to break off. I've had them break off when they seize in there. So I usually just start it like that, put this in there. That gives me one to start. And then I just go around and I put it all in. You don't need nothing crazy to torque them up. I just snug them all up and then just double check them all by hand. That way I kind of know they're not over torqued because these things are so fine and small they're easy to break. So just on the head of 3 8 ratchet I usually just do and then it it's usually they don't come off. I've never had them fly off ever on me. I've cleaned up all the extra goop that's come out of there. So before when we first started no hub lock so we got her in the lock position. Give it a turn here and we got successful four wheel drive again. We'll unlock the hub and they're freewheeling again. Lock the hub, good to go. So we got that all fixed, new U-joint, new wheel bearing. I'm gonna go ahead and throw the caliper on. I got some new pads for this side. The other side all had new pads already. So I'm gonna get that done right now. That's my video on how to do your front four wheel drive hubs, your wheel front wheel bearings and your front axle U-joint. They're doable jobs with the right tools, not that hard. Thanks for watching this video. Hit that like button, hit subscribe to my channel and we'll see you later.